Just as I was getting ready to eat my dinner last night, I went into the bathroom to kind of change into my pajamas and, and get comfortable. And my wife was down on a stool next to the bathtub with our little tiny dog in the bathtub. But she kind of panicked when I came in because that crazy dog loves me for whatever reason and tries to jump out of the tub to follow me. And he doesn't care that he's wet, that he's soaking her, that he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to be free to go play, to, to run and do, and to be wherever I'm at. And, and that's all that matters to him. But if she decided that in order to calm him down, in order to keep him from running through the house wet or jumping on her wet or jumping on me wet, that she was just going to pull the drain and let the dog go right down the drain with the bath water, that would be insane. I mean, yeah, the dog right now is causing a problem, but getting rid of the water and the dog together isn't how you solve the problem. Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. I'm sure we've all heard the old phrase, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And we've let that phrase kind of come and go in our heads for so many years that most people who've heard the phrase or use the phrase don't think deeply about what it means because or just the notion itself seems ludicrous. Why would you empty the wash bucket and throw it away, letting the baby go with the water? I mean, yeah, of course you got to get rid of the dirty water, but to get rid of the baby with the water, that, that just makes no sense at all. It's such a ludicrous, hyperbolic kind of an illustration that most people go, well, duh. But let me put it in another form of an illustration. What if you were driving down the road and in your car that little light came on and said, oil change, overdue. Would you go immediately to the dealership and say, I need to trade it in, it needs an oil change. Well, again, it's just ludicrous. It's so far-fetched, it's so ridiculous. Yes, you have a problem and you have a problem that needs solved. But it doesn't mean you destroy the car. I mean, if somebody's oil change light or even check engine light, which those are a nightmare because it could mean that your tire pressure is low or you left the gas cap off, or it could mean your car is about to burst into flame. Check engine doesn't tell you anything other than, oh, you should go see a, a scientific professional, a certified someone to pay them extra money to figure out why your light is on. And sometimes, literally, they plug in their little gizmo and they go, oh yeah, where's your gas cap? Oh man, I left at the last gas station. That'll be 80 bucks. For a gas cap? No. To tell you the reason your light is on because you left your gas cap off. Uh, but if you put a new gas cap on, you can drive it around for 50 miles and the light will go off again. Problem solved. But I thought I needed to trade in my car because the check engine light came on. See, the, in my opinion, the, the shutting down of our economy, the riots in the street, all of these are really pointing towards something far beyond what scientific evidence can point to. Meaning, we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We've destroyed our economy over the last nine months. We've attacked the freedom of people with the mask wearing and the shutting down of businesses. And, and you can't go to this kind of business, well, unless you're an elite. You can't get your hair cut, well, unless you're a politician. Then you can't go to a gym, well, unless you work for the city. And, and you can't have this kind of meal, well, unless... And so there are exclusions and inclusions all across the board. But the baby and the bathwater are both on their way out of the bucket right now over a problem that... Frankly, even at its worst estimations, we haven't even reached 10%. In fact, I believe the number was 2 million. We're at 180,000. So not even 10% of the projected worst case scenario has come to pass. But we still have politicians who are poking that baby to push it out with the bathwater. We still have politicians who are saying, follow the science. Let me, t let me tell you a little something about the science as I've experienced it. I spent years as a firefighter. Yesterday, I spent the entire day at a fire training organization. And one of the things that we kind of laughed about was that in the years since I went through the academy in 88, uh, CPR has changed. How you administer CPR has changed. How we demonstrate CPR has changed. Uh, ironically, though, it's kind of cyclical. 
it changed at one point they said okay throw away all the books get rid of all the videos get rid of all the training documents that put all that stuff in the garbage we need a new way to do this and so a lot of money was invested in training in new publications in new books in new processes and we learned to do cpr in an entirely different way and then um, less than a decade later we went through exactly the same process throw away all those books we'll print new books we'll spend new money on new training etc etc to learn how to do cpr another way but in the course of about 30 years since I went through the academy, there have been maybe half a dozen different ways to do CPR, but they're always one of the same half dozen. So it's almost as if to say there's really six different ways to do CPR, and this season we'll do it like this, and next season we'll do it like something else, as long as we have the right to reprint and resell more training material. Hmm. Interesting how that works. The money is what's behind it. The same in different firefighting methodologies. Do we spray the water at the ceiling and let the steam help put out the fire? Do we open the doors and the windows and let all the heat out because that will lower the burning temperature and, and therefore it'll be easier to attack the fire? Or do we let it burn itself out until there's no oxygen left in the building and then just cool it from the outside and, and wait until we can actually attack it? Do we attack and only save the buildings around it and let whatever's on fire burn, but we're really here for defensive measures? See, these are all different tactics and methodologies that have changed over the years. And all of them still have the same thing in mind, and that is get the job done. There's different ways to get the job done. But in the same way that you wouldn't look for a telephone pole to ram your car into the first time your check engine light or your change the oil light comes on, I don't think we should have looked for the opportunity to dismantle America, to defund the police, to destroy first responders, to criticize every organization and institution we've learned to trust in over 200 years of success. Do we have issues? Yes, we have issues. Do we have race issues? Yes, we have race issues. We have income inequality issues. We have medical process issues. We have insurance companies that make more money for just administering your insurance than the doctor does for doing the work the insurance is paying for. Let that sink in for a minute. And then remember that Obamacare had nothing to do with hospitals and everything to do with insurance. They, they didn't go to the hospital and say, we'll guarantee to give you a check. They went to the insurance companies and said, we're going to set up a system whereby we guarantee everybody has to pay the insurance company. It had nothing to do with health care. It had everything to do with insurance. Do the research. If you think I'm crazy, I'm telling you the truth. But if you don't believe that throwing the baby out with the bathwater is a good idea or trading in your car when the change oil light comes on or crashing it into the telephone pole because the check engine light came on, then throwing away the best republic in world history, look it up. The longest lasting, most resilient, most prosperity producing, most freedom producing, organizational structure of a nation in the history of the world. Throwing that away because we do have some problems with racism and medical billing and income inequality, uh, well, that's the same as crashing into a telephone pole because you need an oil change. My friends, what you're seeing in the streets today is not a protest to speak up for those who've been treated unjustly. It may have started that way. What we're seeing right now is the beginning of a Marxist revolution. Again, listen to their rhetoric. They're not lying to you. They're telling you exactly what they plan to do. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they're doing. What is that old phrase? That your words don't mean anything because your actions are speaking so loudly. Uh, this looks exactly like Turkey and the, the Arab Spring and, and many other revolutions. Cuba and Venezuela and the list goes on. Just before socialism comes in, there are riots in the street, and the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, and the car gets crashed when the oil change light comes on. Then I'm telling you right now, if we don't wake up and wise up, this baby we've called America, this baby democracy, this brand new republic, this 250-year-old experiment is going to be gone. And when it is, there'll be nobody else left to stand in the gap. Right now, we are the thumb in the dike. America is the thumb in the dike against this radical Marxist idea spreading around the globe. They'll promise you free health care. What you'll get is no health care. They'll promise you that all of your medicine will be paid for. And what you'll get is little or no medicine. 
it will become unavailable because there's nobody left to pay for it. Just read the history books and stop believing everything you're told in the media. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.